Can you describe its form? No. Start from the beginning. What do you think I do when you're away? You think I'm out in the garden, pining, looking up at the sky? <laughs> Why aren't you here? I gotta leave a day early. Your husband's here. Let me see him. He's extremely ill. You have to tell me where he was, what he was doing. It was his decision to go in. It's something they termed the shimmer. We've sent in drones and teams of people, but nothing comes back. But something has. You're a biologist. You served in the military. If I knew what happened, I could save his life. The boundary's getting bigger, it's expanding. We're talking cities, states. You need to know what's inside. So do I. It's beautiful. Check this out. It's like they're stuck in a continuous mutation. Anything interesting in there? No. Sharks have teeth like that. It's not possible. You can't crossbreed different species. What is it? The soldiers on the last expedition. They went crazy. Or something in here killed them. Something's come through the fence. Through the fence? We have to go back. I can't go back. We can camp here tonight. It's destroying everything. It's not destroying. It's making something new. Hi everybody. Uh, today with me is a is my guest and friend Lada Leon from Sovereign Keys, and we are going to be discussing the Annihilation, the movie from the series Tales from the Script Keepers. And we've got a lot of things that's that's uh, chock and block in this uh, discussion. We're going to be shooting from the hip, and we're going to be discussing the uh, hyper reality that we are currently experiencing. And for those of you who, are, who do not know Lauda Leon or Sovereign Keys, uh, Lauda Leon's focus is aiding the process of our spiritual integration, examining the complex dynamics of psychology, emotions, mind, body, and spirit towards increased comprehension of our current paradigm upon all its levels and layers. Lauda is an experiencer of many forms of anomalous operations and interference. Having in, entered as an incarnate with rebirth consciousness memories, including future timelines and advanced knowledge of events to come. She has lived in between worlds with comprehensions of the nature of this cosmic battle, which we are currently in, piercing through the veil of our worldly paradigm. So and as a result of such experiences, she has accessed keys relating to the game being played within this reality and applies uh, those keys towards further unveiling unto per into personal sovereignty upon these metaphysical quantum levels and layers in perpetual unfolding. And so with uh, this amazing background of your experience, it's a wonderful opportunity to have you here with me, Lada. And um, well, we are, we're going to definitely discuss the, a lot of things. Thank yeah, you. We're Thanks gonna go me. down the rabbit hole. It's great uh, well, to be here, and um, thank you. Thank you. So, the movie that we decided to re to review was kind of like an inspirational process where I thought, you know, Annihilation in itself, given the time that it was made in 2018, I think that's also a big telling um, thing as well. Um, if we needed to understand, for those who have not watched the movie, I'm sorry, we're going to be spoiling the plot for you. So sorry for you. Please stop the movie then and watch something <laughs> else. 
But I will give you some background to what we're looking at, um, the plot summary. Um, so we will be reviewing the movie Annihilation as part of the Script Keeper series as the first one uh, of many and deconstruct it and look for some obvious links and associations with regards to the demiurge and in nature about the system overlay. And that's what we would call the system overlay, of course, and what the movie's predictive programming was all about. And also uh, that it's a message that was given from the original author, Jeff van der Meer, which has also got a little bit of a side story to him. And uh, van der Meer was on a hike through St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge, apparently, where he actually fell asleep. This is what he said, quote, unquote, that he has also uh, had dreams that inspired while he was in the park about these elements and started to write about the tower from the annihilation itself. Uh, moreover, Van der Meer has cited a number of books as having an influence on Southern Reach, which is uh, connected to Area X, such as The Other Side of the Mountain by Michael Bernard Bernanos. That is an actual place that really exists, supposedly. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Do I need to read the entire plot summary? It's a quite a long... Uh, well, I, I think it would help people. Um, but I, what I want to say is that I just want to highlight yeah. that in the title yeah. of Annihilation, you have Ion. And yeah. you've got the Aeons. Yes. Right? Yes. The principalities, the Aeons of the Demiurge. Of that's pretty good. Uh, that's good spotting there. That's good train spotting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, reading the plot for people would be really good. All right. Okay, I'll do that. Um, you know, something about the, the word Annie. Do you remember Annie Skywalker? Anakin Sky Skywalker mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also yeah. made me think of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, okay, that was a bit lame, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the plot, for those who don't know about the movie Annihilation, I'll read it for you here. Annihilation is a 2018 science fiction psychological horror film written and directed by Alex Garland, based on the 2014 novel of the same name by Jeff van der Meer. It stars Natalie Portman, Jennifer Jason Lee, Gina Rodriguez, etc., etc., lots of many other names. The story follows an, a group of explorers who enter the Shimmer, a mysterious quarantined zone of mutation or mutating plants and animals caused by an alien presence. Annihilation was released the the theatrically in the United States by Paramount Pictures on February 23rd, 2018, and in China, and get the date, April 13, 2018. It was released digitally by Netflix in a number of other countries on March 12, 2018. And I've put a link for everyone to look at underneath this video. And it starts by uh, the main progenitor, the uh, leading person, Lena, a biology professor and army veteran, loses her husband, Kane, after he is deployed on a special forces mission. I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? She believes Kane accepted a suicide mission because she cheated on him. <clears throat> Kane suddenly reappears at home, then starts convulsing. Lena calls an uh, ambulance, but government forces diverted to a secret facility. A psychologist named Dr. Ventress uh, tells her a mysterious zone called the Shimmer has been expanding from a fallen meteor for three years. Kane's team explored the Shimmer uh, but only he returned uh, in a comatose state. She wants Lena to join a new expedition to the lighthouse where the meteor landed. Lena joins to find answers for Kane's coma. Ventress also recruits the physics, the physicist Josie Reddick, the geomorphologist Cassie or Cass, and the paramedic Anya Sorensen. Notice the Norse surname there. After entering the, the shimmer, 
the group wakes up and realizes they already traveled several days but have no memory of the journey. All wildlife in the shimmer has mutated. An alligator will, with shark teeth attacks Josie, but the group saves her. And so basically it just keeps going on and on and on where they are fighting a lot of things. Um, there's a giant mutated bear that arrives. Um, the survivors discover plants shaped like humans is very important. This part leading Josie to theorize that the shimmer distorts the information like a prism refracts light. Intermixing the wildlife DNA and Anya realizes they are also mutating and ties up the others in a panic. And so it goes on and on and on. <clears throat> I will leave that there. At the end, the last part, which I want to just give in, uh, is the, at the facility, Lena tells the uh, an interrogator that the Shimmer did not seek to destroy, but to make something new. That's also important. She asks Kane, who is now awake, if he is really Kane, and he replies, I don't think so. <laughs> he asks if she, if she is really Lena, and she says she gives no answer. They embrace, and their irises start to shimmer. And so... Something interesting, which I thought was important to add in before we actually go to the meat of the subject, was that Paramount Pictures' Scott Rudin acquired rights to the novel Annihilation. Scott Rudin, with the help of Paramount Pictures, bought the film rights to the movie Annihilation and then proceeded to unpublish the first novel in the Fundamere's trilogy series, Southern Reach Trilogy on March, March 26, 20, 2016. How's that? Well, okay. Un, unpublish? Unpublish his, his novels. Unpublish it. Mm -hmm. There's Scott Rudin. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, yeah, he also had some, some stuff that happened to him, which I won't be mentioning now. But the links will be available mm. and something about paramount as well for us to look at well, who paramount really is you know i mean that yeah as if that doesn't say it already who uh, do you think they are uh, who do i think they are they're just another uh body of uh companies conglomerate of com companies that are essentially using a lot of the scripting to address, to create, to help create the hyper reality, who they actually are. Uh, I've got a few ideas, but I'm not really sure on them. Who do you think they are? Okay, so that's Mount Hebron. Okay, and that's the location where the fallen angelics went. Okay, they landed. The stars okay. that are around it represent the fallen angelics. Okay, that's interesting. How many stars are there? I did count them before, and then, like, I researched this, and this, uh, one, two, three, was it 27? One, two, three. 24? I don't count so well. Or 22? Um, 20, but anyway. It, it doesn't matter, really, it's, the number. It's, is. It's, it's a representative of, of the fallen angelics, right? Okay. Which you could say are the Nephilim. I can see that. I can go with that. Yeah. So I, I, I like never you knew. You see, I would I would assume that if you've lived there, you'd know the mountain. I, I would not know. So that is my um that's mm -hmm. interesting information. So then it explains a lot mm -hmm. about everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So these guys have then then it explains the following thing here, which is pretty interesting as well. The Paramount Globe's chief financial officer, Naveen Chopra, uh, but it's it's not so much who they are, it's what they represent. They represent the capital markets, global technology, internet, media, and telecommunications. That's what they represent. I mean, this is a movie company, right? Mm -hmm. That's in charge of all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And so with the can you go up above just yeah, for a minute sure. just to yeah. go up above Sorry. that. You want to check the mountain again? No, up above oh. that. You want to see him? Him. Him. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. so was that what did all his problems come after the movie? Yeah. 
that is what it appears to be like. I mean, that's when it started. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's when it started. Yeah. It was actually when he bought the rights. That's when it exactly, that's when it started. Because since then, he had all of these uh, things sanctioned against him. I mean, he was apparently uh, reported that he was abusive to his employees um, with uh, being violent against these people mm -hmm. and on numerous occasions. So he has a temper problem, a very big temper problem. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very much so. Whereas it's funny, uh, the first thing I thought when I looked at this guy, Scott, and I looked at... I'll just scroll down now. Uh, on high quality media and entertainment. This is the original author, Jeff Van der Meer. Uh -huh. That there's this like strange sort of like, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, I did think initially they almost looked alike, but now that I see they do a little and they don't. So it's quite bizarre. See again. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just maybe the features. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I don't I don't think they look alike, but you know There's I, some sort of yeah. similarity with them. Yeah. I mean that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the uh the first book, the book that basically had all three books. Yeah. There they are, and it's Annihilation, Acceptance, Authority mm -hmm. in that order. Right. Acceptance and authority. And you see the images of that are on there as well. First, the plant kingdom, then the the air. So it's air. It's it's earth, air, and that would be the icon for rabbit hole. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. This the nature of this real reality well, Alice, is often yeah. represented as a rabbit, as well as yeah. the, you know, how reality here manifests itself and definitely it's down a very large rabbit hole yeah it definitely reminds me of the rabbit uh, the rabbit is obviously very iconically used in like what you just said there um alice in wonderland obviously that's a big thing about the rabbit as well yeah uh, but in any case what we what did you find um, i mean i had i made a few notes of what i found from the movie all i could see is just just the a massive, massive amount of um, information that's in there that, I mean, for that time of when the guy wrote it in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, to And I compared the notes with the book, with the books, all three books. I mean, they're like very thin little books. They're like 150 pages each. Mm. Uh, and the book had a very strange... Um, I would not have said I did not don't, did not pick up that it was done under any sort of uh, influences at all. I, I actually felt like he was having some sort of um, download. Yeah, yeah, I would say a download because mm -hmm. um, this mm -hmm. shimmer, this this oil on the on the on the water type feet, uh, thing is is quite um, prevalent these days. I mean, you can see it in mm -hmm. the sky, and I've got some sample images of that to actually show you that I've found. Well, so, everything reflects off of the plasma, right? Yeah, exactly. And like the nature of reality is not fixed. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is like a play on, on the various um, dimensional um, interfacing yeah. because reality is not fixed. Yeah, absolutely. And because there's life within this reality, it obviously emits um, light. So it causes the um, anomalous uh, imaging of, of it to take place, very similar to, to hyperdimensionality. Yeah. Um, John Baudrillard, you've heard of John Baudrillard. I mean, I think uh, he wrote the book Simulacra, Simulacrum. Yes. And it was originally yep. written like that before they've changed it to suddenly to simulation, which is bizarre. Yeah. Uh, I do remember. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Do you remember that it was simulacra, simulacrum? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Simulacrum. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yep. And so based on, the, on that, I've basically uh, given a quote here on what is hyper-reality, because that is something that needs to be understood, I think, for, by the audience and those who are looking, watching. Yeah. A hyper-reality is described by Jean Baudrillard. The concept of hyper-reality captures the inability to disguise the real from the signif signifier of it, like the demiurge projection. This is more prominent in technology advanced, technologically advanced societies. Hyperreality is seen as a condition in which what is real and what is fiction are seeming seamlessly blending together so that there is no clear distinction between where one ends and where the other end begins. And so it allows the merging of physical reality and original creation with virtual reality or augmented reality or demiurgic, as I put in brackets, false or system overlay and human yep. intelligence with artificial intelligence, like you've just explained, um, dimensional. Yeah. Yeah. And the dimensions, like I say, interface with us. So because the nature of reality isn't fixed, mm. we can easily experience a multifaceted dimensional experience yeah where different forms of existence merge with ours yeah and that i mean essentially the portal opens right you walk through yeah. you don't notice it's the portal and you're just somewhere else it's all yes. fluid right yeah yeah you um did, uh, uh when you watched did you, you did watch it again hey no, I didn't. I just I watched it it's a crazy while ago. But yeah. yeah, but I just it stuck in my head because it was so um loaded. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um I watched it again because I wanted to get some some images and things because I can't I, I only remembered this mostly uh -huh. and everything else in between. But here's what brings what you mentioned about the uh, Nephilim mm -hmm. um, and the mountain as well. It uh, sort of ties into this image. Um, mm -hmm. This is the and beginning part of the movie. I've taken a screenshot of the beginning. Right. A, yeah, and then it comes and, and it's the tower. And that is, again, the fallen angelics, which in Paramount, the stars, each star represents fallen angelics that turned into the Nephilim. Yes, the watchers exactly. okay exactly and, and they came they fell to earth so you you often see so many reveals from paramount when they do these movies because that's really what what they're saying right here right that's a part of the yeah. demiurgic aeons that you know yeah crash into the earth so to speak and interesting that it actually hits the lighthouse um, mm -hmm. which is obviously an archetype for wisdom keepers, wisdom, yes. uh, in the inner light, inner insight, um, very much so. And there's this dark, light, dark skies around it. Right. So at a time of consciousness where it's dark, that is when these things start to manifest themselves, I would assume. And, uh, and we are the lighthouse. So the yes. lighthouse represents what is within us. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same as that. Um, and if it's not um, looked after, if you've not looked after your gift within yourself, then you very much, let's say, as representing the lighthouse, um, consciousness could then also become something like what was in um, the movie, uh, what was it? <clears throat> uh, Lord of the Rings. Where Sauron, yep. there's this tower that becomes a Sauron, Sauron's eye, yep. thing, whatever. It's like an iconic thing. And so, and of course, this hits the lighthouse, so it's hitting yeah. us. It's hitting it, our yeah. light. Yeah, it's actually, uh, yeah, it does because it's as it as it hits it, they show this weird overlay of I don't know what this is. That hits it but it hits it at its foundation mm -hmm. um and then there's the next wow. scene of it again 
So uh, yeah, to me it was like a tower moment, like I wrote there from the ter from terror as well. That's when normally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and what you said when it hit the foundation, it it's hitting the root of our being. Yeah, which is right, and this is yeah. how we relate to reality. Everything it's it's the very root of us. So it it didn't hit in a place that you know above the root. If you yeah, if you will, yeah, it hit yes. it hit exactly at the very core of our being. Yes, which then. As we know, the current situation of the last few years is very much a focus on the root of the organ of the the human genome. Can I say that? The divine, yes, <laughs> the divine yes. genome. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's when it's um, being altered. This is what I assume. Right. This is and, what this and means. then you yeah. and you see this now. You're starting to see the relationship of these other dimensional realities hitting and, and manifesting inside the dimension yes. of the lighthouse inside that level of reality. So now you're yeah. starting to see the emergence and the merging together of these mm -hmm. other realities. Yeah. And then they try to portray a, they mm -hmm. basically are utilizing the, focus from the consciousness uh that's happening to them and they are basically absorbing that energy and then they are projecting it it's very very interesting they're projecting it then into a false overlay or a type of overlay over that specific aspect that that is definitely very interesting that's which yeah. is the nature of this reality, right? Because right. the overlays right. hide whatever really is there. Because now yeah. what you're getting is just as as when you walk through a portal and you're somewhere else, you're yeah. now not even aware that your your projections and the mirroring projecting reality is creating all of these subconscious creations, right? Yeah. So it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Yeah. This thing hits, all these dimensions start appearing, and your relationship with that dynamic is now causing a cause and effect to yeah. create other realities because it's mimicking. And this yeah. reality, the simulacrum, mimics. Yes. Because it's it, it is a counterfeit, and it's all based on creating, you know, reflections and copies and mirrors and projections. Absolutely, and then because it's so fractured, obviously the fractals of these reflections is systematically slow showing itself or revealing itself in the society through whatever these they are wokers, liberal, all that stuff. Those those yep. things. You no, know, you're not you anymore. You're they and then yeah. and whatever else those things so it literally fractures the the the, the yeah the, the, the light breaks yeah in and, millions of pieces that's basically right. what it is yeah exactly so literally you, you're, you're getting people that are basically experiencing this type of uh fractal reality that, yes and their behavior uh or yeah, their behavior is 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 very much refer reflecting that their relationships and everything reflects that sort of behavior. Yeah, which is very interesting. It does 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 make sense. Now this is also the next scene where obviously she she sees him again. Um, this is Kane, and they are now. This is the first time he's come back from Shimmer Area X. Obviously, the crossing out. <clears throat> Kane. Um, wasn't Cain lost in uh, the biblical scriptures? Wasn't Cain uh, chased out or sent away? Cain and Abel after he killed yeah, Abel? Yeah, after he killed Abel. Yeah. He so was, Cain he was marked and then, yeah, right. Yeah. So um, then it would, it is very interesting because this, this kind of makes me think that, um, so what's come back? 
you know, type of thing when came you know, when came did eventually come back. I mean, remember Noah's Ark story as well. It's also very strongly referred to as his sons. Um, I'm jumping around here uh, with uh, the sons as well. Was it? I'll have to find it later. I'll have to put it in when I find it. I can't remember. One of the sons was chased away. Was it? I don't uh, remember. Yeah. What from Cain and Abel? Yeah, isn't Cain family of 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 Noah? Cain and Abel aren't they family of 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 Noah? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. So and Something after there. the murder, he was he was exiled. Yes, and marked. Okay, that's it. That's it. Um, mm -hmm. which would actually, if we had finished this, we would actually should actually be looking at the Cain at, at, at the Noah's movie because <laughs> I can. This is kind of making a story here. That, uh, yeah, well, it's not it's not a coincidence that they named him Cain. Yes, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this is just in case no one knew that he was a soldier. Uh, and there is the place where Fentress was um, obviously talking to them. Uh, this is the Area X or that um, place that's called the Southern Reach Trilogy, Southern Reach Facility. Mm, Southern like Reach. On, yeah. How's that for the root mm -hmm. chakra being reached into? This mm -hmm. is all about the... Uh, you know, um, hypersexualizing or hyper reality based on what's physically rooting into the base chakra, which makes you start to question your origin, which is exactly what you've mentioned with regards to the to the lighthouse, the base. The well, foundation. yeah, and and you question what is the nature of real? What is reality? Like, are you real? Yeah. Is this real? You start yeah. not knowing the difference, right? Because there is nothing fixed. Yeah. And so basically, as we go, as we lead to this, now it's even more, there's this weird, I don't know if you've noticed this weird magenta that's been- Yes, that's everywhere. Been, I can plaster it everywhere. It's just annoying. <laughs> it's, it's very annoying. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's like the AI version to read to overlay the original divine frequencies so these artificial colors are the ai version to counterfeit it okay, to replace cool. it in reality that makes sense and, yeah, and I, thus yeah. thus it would also impact your dna because now your DNA is registering the synthetic AI counterfeit version of the original divine version. So mm -hmm. in, you know, because we're all made of frequency, the, they know that this will impact how we relate to reality on a genetic level even. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. Everything, yeah. an atom is a, and a particle, it's all frequency. Yes. So if, if they, if they create a counterfeit version to overlay the original divine, then now you're sort of plugged into the machine, if you will, in a different way. And your whole frequency and your being and your atoms are going to be registering this frequency, not the divine one. And that's why they're plastering it everywhere. Yeah. With the green as well. I um, did a And the blue. Yes. And the blue blue is now starting up again. Uh, starting mm -hmm. up now it's a type of i don't know i can't really make up what type of blue it is it's a i don't know it's like an aquatic aqua marine aqua type color blue uh which makes me think of aquarius that they're trying to you know spin on mm -hmm. aquarius the age mm -hmm. it very much makes sense with what you're saying there about the the, the color as the um as like a key it's like a different mm -hmm. it's like yeah. a type of key yeah it's a sense. it's a counterfeit key yes. that you know because with if you didn't have these counterfeit keys or frequencies then you as a divine being are registering what are actually the divine frequencies and colors associated with that 
Yeah. But now you're plugged into this and it's a yeah. form of artificial intelligence that is like encasing everything. Yeah. So, you know, you're sort of in, inside, you know, one of those little globe balls that you yeah. have, so to speak, yeah. right? It's all uh -huh. being infused with it. So whatever's in it is now infused <laughs> with the counterfeit version. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Okay. There's Fentress, obviously. But they think that was just to, okay. There's a reason why they're all scientists, of course. Um, she supposedly in the book. This is the psychologist has a is on a suicide mission. They keep referring to it as a suicide mission all the time. Mm -hmm. um, she does. She has cancer in the book. It says she's got cancer and she's not intending to come back. So she she knows she's gonna die. Um, this woman has lost her husband and she's lost her kids as well. And she's basically got no one to live for, supposedly. This girl is, uh, cuts herself. I don't know if I could say that. We'll see. Uh, depressive. And, um, this girl is the, uh, the medic, the medic, and she's the biologist, the, the lead actress. So they're all science-based, science-focused, but they are all, I still I still feel there's this like sort of like, I mean, this is mind, body, soul, something, something, which I'm still trying to figure that out. But there's this weird sort of connection with that. Why is it just them? You know, why those specific people? And why five and five, and five? women? Well, yeah, obviously it would lead us now to what's been going on these days with the feminine thing. I see they're going back onto the 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 dark feminist thing going back there again. They they do these cycles. I mean, a few four or five years ago they did the they did it. They're doing it again now. It's very well, you know, this is yeah, and this is very interesting because I think of archetypes. Yeah. Of Yaldaboeth. Yes. Right. I think of the yeah. archetype nature of Yeldabaoth, which represents like depression, mm. um, like uh, psychopathy. Like it, yeah. it's it's like there are they each represent a fractal of that demiurgic yes. overlay that has been placed here which is characterized by negative uh, rejection, abandonment, l longing for love, uh, needing something to live for, um, hatred, um, you know, depression, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. rage, anger, like. Yeah. Psychologies of, of, mm -hmm. of the human, of the human psyche and the nature mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does it does tend to make me think of the same sort of like uh, idea or the ideologies that they're trying to portray these days as we know i don't think we need to go into that but mm -hmm. um, it is very much uh uh i mean they would use this specific specific girl first in the movie she's the first one that actually gets injured first and whatever grabs her um since she's the one that's the most saddest i mean mm -hmm. she's the one that doesn't uh reveal much whereas the other girls uh suppress their emotional states which is very similar which is which if i go back to what you're saying about the um archetypes yeah it does make sense because there's the one that always feels the most that gets hurt hurt the first mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. um yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so in the book, yeah, they have mentioned this very interesting part here. Well, in the book, there's mention that the group of women had been hypnotized by the psychologist so that they would be able to withstand the shimmer and be able to manage everything in the right way, according to the book. The exploration into the shimmer enters Area X. Historically, it's said that no one ever comes back who enters it, and the team biologist. Okay, all them. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's it. That's basically it. So they were hypnotized. That's what I thought was interesting, which mm -hmm. wasn't mentioned in the movie. Mm -mm. Um, it, Very it, interesting. It, yes, indeed. 
And then obviously compass is not so uh, morality, you know. Well, let me let me ask this. Yeah. Is not everyone here hypnotized to interface with this counterfeit version of reality? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and this is happens. a rep and this yeah. is a representation of actually this reality. This movie yeah. reflects this reality. Ex exactly. This is why I thought it was such a good idea to discuss this movie. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of discussions of it, but they're all both basically generic in certain way. Um, and I've gone right. through most of them. There's like six versions of the discussions of it. And I think it's not being approached in the correct way. Right. Uh, and so if you're hypnotized, you lose your compass, your original divine compass. Absolutely. Well, as what is happening here, because yes. it, it because is represented. You would want to go and get yourself so that you would not want to yes. become aware of anything else. I mean, that's something else. Yeah. yeah. Look for yeah, do that thing. Mm -hmm. And that's um, a state of mind control, right? Yeah. Mass mind control. Yeah. And the hypnosis. Of, yeah, absolutely. Um, which is then obviously where they, and so it leads to the next scene. I mean, just as you noticed that the compass was spinning in circles, they mm -hmm. thought that, well, they knew that that was going to be the end. There's no way of turning back. The funny thing I didn't, I forgot to put in here was they were looking for the sun where the sun was shining and as they looked up at the sky they just like established that's where the sun should be normally mm -hmm. and there's this just this haze of light you don't really know where the sun is it actually looked like they were there was one big luminous light above it and i forgot to put it in oh, it's uh, yeah. very interesting it's in that movie so the mm -hmm. sun was like magnified or there was another sun there um, obviously, the consciousness would seek a sun or a type of yes. that is hyper illuminated or hyper hyper sigilized in a in a form that would make you feel that you are comforted by whatever religion, perhaps, or whatever it, it may be. Um, that could even be the New Age religion because it's so magnified. Right. Um, so the sun is lost inside the. Yeah reflection of yes. of that hypnotic state where you can't yes. you can't find your own center yeah absolutely so it's a it's a reflection right like it's yes. what you see being reflected on a prism obscuring reality yes. so that you can't see now interesting you say that about the obscuring it reminds me of um that thing that uh uh, John D. apparently invented something called the camera obscura, um, where you look through a cutout, uh, or the sun shines through a cutout and is then projected through a lens onto the wall and turns the image upside down. Mm -hmm. So um, this is what I'm thinking is happening. I'm yeah. actually thinking that in this movie, there's this obscuring of things, as you've mentioned, and there's an obscuring in the consciousness because it's all turned upside down to okay. the base, to the root chakra, which then creates this obscured reality that we're existing in as, as we speak. I mean, the not inversion. all of us are living. Yes, it's the, very, it's the overlay uh, with what we're in, but um, we uh, we are not as affected as they are, but we can see it, which mm -hmm. is very interesting. It's, it's, it truly is like micro, it's like pocket realities that we're all in. And, and again, it's a representation of the fact that we are in an inverted reality. Absolutely. Yes. And that's um, why the compass is spinning like uncontrollably. Yeah, absolutely. And um, well, yeah. I just went into calling the scientists as a belief or religion because of the fact that uh, they were really focused on the teeth of the crocodile, which mm -hmm. if you really have to dig very deep, um, there's a picture of Mandy P. Hall who writes a, a pic picture on a book, and I'll put it in, um, where thought, uh, her mistress Magister stands on a white crocodile. 
which this makes me think that this is it's just yet yet another mimic or an explanation as you say of an inverted reality it just leads to and that the inverted reality always has a duplicate nature everything here is duplicated yes because the counterfeit because the counterfeit reality is duplicated the original non counterfeit reality yeah so, so it's based on a duplication system yeah. a facsimile copy a copy of everything copy of everything's copy. everything's copied yeah like a giant disco ball god memorable <laughs> so do you think that it um that it's because i'm just asking you now off the cuff do you think that the reason it's become like this is because of the actual energy or the energetics from the people itself? Or is this also worked on or enforced from outside? What what, what I, I think this was always think? how the Demiurge created and the Aldeboth created reality here as a counterfeit version of the original. So I think the nature of this copy we're living in mm. implies that there's another us that is mm. real but that we are living in the copy in the copied version so that everything is actually based on duplication in one way or another and mimicry because okay. it isn't the original no and i know so it is are... essentially the parasite mind here yes it is, is a... it is the actual interface yeah you're absolutely spot on because i actually literally had a had a, a dream just a while ago where i was actually having the idea that it reminded me of something that that i did feel that there was some sort of that it was starting to lose its traction mm -hmm. and um losing its traction would make it hyper loop or bunch things up even more so we well, would be, yeah because it's trying think, to not use its power. That's what I was. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think as the primes wake up and, you know, really see through the the illusory, counterfeit duplication, version of reality that's inverted, we become the glitch in the matrix. That makes sense. So we're the we're what we're the we are what is. Yeah, we are the anomaly, and we are what is actually taking this down. Yes. So it's very hard for this to sustain itself the more that we wake up. Yeah. We're we're breaking it down. We're, like, dismantling it. Yeah. I actually believe that. Very much so. Um, again, here's another, just an example of this thing that's just a copy of and supposedly... The other one, um, in the movie, they jump in sy symmetry or synchronicity. They jump at the same time. It's like a as yeah. above, so below, right? Yeah. It's it's the mirror. Yeah. It's the mirror reality. Again, yes. everything about this movie is showing yeah. you that there's yeah. like there's two. There's a mirror reality version going on all here, and everything again is being mirrored. So it's all based on duplication. And you think of as above, so below, right? Yeah. The premise yeah. of like the ancient knowledge, as above, so below. So that's telling you this is a mirror reality. Yeah. So you're going to see a duplicate version. Yeah. A mirror of, even, of it's itself. Not, it's obviously even more so now, more now, even more disturbing or hyper disturbed because yep. of the fact that it's bunching up and because it's trying to save itself and because everyone is waking yep. up or as you say the primes are waking up yeah mm -hmm. it definitely is much related to the primes work to put it like that this is coming towards the end of of, of uh -huh. the parts that i thought was very interesting as well i mean this kind of tells it all doesn't it i mean uh, it's yeah it's like so obvious um she started by in the beginning of the movie she actually had like this weird bruise on her arm mm -hmm. and she started to touch it all the time sort of in the movie and as it goes through when she starts to become um whatever that is i mean the ouroboros well so, that is like 
massive. This is a massive <laughs> reveal in the movie. You think? <laughs> so the deeper you go into the inverted reality, dimensional reality system, which is all counterfeited, right? Not yeah. original. Yeah. The more that you go into the Ouroboros, and the Ouroboros is again that mirrored reality as above, so below, two worlds yeah. mirroring one another. Yeah. But yeah. the Ouroboros is a snake eating itself. It eats itself because it's not prime original. It All eats right. itself because it's disconnected. So it has no option but to consume its own energy, which is based yes. on a counterfeit artificial system. Absolutely. Which is why food is its focus. Food in terms mm -hmm. of the consumerism society is now they so they take they 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 they've got this big dark board and they just you know choose okay today we're going to talk about eggs all the eggs must be abolished okay yesterday we spoke about chickens all chickens must die you know tomorrow it's going to be all farmers must get killed etc 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 type of thing i'm saying it really fast so it doesn't pick me up um basically that is its issue so if you present it all the time for it to do that it would definitely start to do that i mean really it's, it's yeah it's, it's, uh, yeah it, it, it's a reality that will consume itself into non-existence because it's not connected to anything real it's a counterfeit mirror version it, correct yes and those that are in that or mm -hmm. within that reality they're doing it they're well doing and that's why the more that she's in that reality the more she is marked by it like Cain. Yes. So, yeah, that is basically the part of the, so I, I, I um, yeah, that's definitely, that makes a lot of sense. The shimmer and area X duplicates animals. And this just highlights with what you've just said about the mirroring um, light and radio and magnetism that's in the book. It affects the team's minds. It affects time. The team loses a few days at the start. So the area distorts, duplicates, merges, mutates, which is what people are doing these days. I mean, if they join groups or they look at all these hundreds of masses of emojis and shit that comes through their, their little devices, um, it's very uh, Mutating. Yeah, <laughs> Well, because that, that's what the Nephilim do. That's what the fallen angelics do. They are masters of mutation. Yes. That's why their well, whole thing create. is to invert. Yeah. What are they doing with this like sex stuff going on? They're inverting again, inverting yeah. the yeah. original template. It, they're always inverting and mutating and doing all these genetic, you know, horrifying experiments. Yeah. to invert the divine into something that is an inversion just like you're in that mm. inverted reality yeah which is why it's so important obviously for our for our um audience on the people that are subscribed to us or that we're talking to the people that we know our friends and family that we're able to remind them the whole time of you know who they are keep reminding them of being of becoming whole, you know, not to become, you know, not to have any loose ends, and not, life, you know? Not not to allow the fallen angelics, which are, this agenda going on is all fallen angelic Nephilim agenda, mm -hmm. not to allow them to mutate and invert you into an inversion. Because Via see, as a divine being, yes. yeah, you Via are you are a representative of what is not inverted, but you happen to be in the inversion. But if you allow them to mutate you and to create all these horrifying synthetic, you know, artificial mm -hmm. versions, which is what their mo is, mm -hmm. then you cease to be that yeah. divine original. Yeah, it is basically. Uh agreeing to the contract where you become subjected to uh, whatever belief is being projected onto you by agreeing to that contract. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah. And, and that contract is demonic and yes. it's all based on inversion. Yes. Yeah. 
Taking what's holy and making it unholy. Taking what's holy and making it corrupt. Yes, all the time. Doesn't matter what it is. They they yeah. take they practically took every single thing that was in this movie and it was interfered with. Yeah. Every single thing, including yeah. the flowers that you would think are beautiful, they were mutated into some weird, gross, mass productive, productive or produced thing that you don't know what the hell you're looking at type of thing. So I've added some thoughts here. Um, I've, I've added, I've touched on the part about the aliens. Is it alien? Mm -hmm. It is alien to, to a, it's alien to me when I see, I mean, people behaving in a very strange way is alien. Um, uh, that is the idea. Mm -hmm. um, so they would obviously play with that idea. They would play with the PSYOP stuff as well. Um, they, I, I do know, I don't know if you, you would also probably have picked it up as, um, have you found that there's a lot of hyper uh, uh, information on extraterrestrials and UFO yes. stuff? It's, it's overloaded. Like, yeah. It's, it's like mass production. Mm -hmm. So much that you don't know what's real, what you, what you used to sort of, you know, I don't know. Well, and experience was you know when you wrote here it's alien to see how people behave it's alien to see this you know when you watch this movie this is all yeah. you know if you want to call yeah. it alien but it is the infection yeah. it is the parasitic infection that is growing yeah because they're inside this thing that is growing but they're infected Mm. so they have entered that inverted reality where this alien presence is changed how they relate to reality but just like the parasite infects your mind and the inversion is what this movie is revealing yeah that alien presence is that parasitic infector yeah absolutely that has that has overlaid it's it's reality onto how you're experiencing it, aka taken over your consciousness. So mm -hmm. you're now That's interfacing really with with its version, mm -hmm. which we know in the end happens to her because mm -hmm. she has the struggle. They do they come to this to the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. This is the the foundation of the lighthouse. This is where the thing hit it the that that beam of light hit it on the side mm -hmm. um and this thing burrowed a hole all the way inside to the foundation and basically Do you know what? sorry go ahead go ahead no no go go ahead go ahead no no no, no that's it that's basically what i want to no, say no you know what just occurred to me what okay it hit it on the side of the lighthouse yeah okay now in the story of adam and eve Eve yeah. apparently is created from one of the ribs of Adam from huh. the side. That is amazing. Wow, that makes sense. And also, um, do you remember uh, Jesus was stabbed with a spear on the side as well? Spear of destiny. Yes. Oh, my goodness. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The tower. The tower is also, uh, I know, um, the name the tower means uh magdalene as mm -hmm. well so it's a feminine uh oh and that but that's a representation of us that's a representation of, the tower yes. is the human yes yes and look at that headless mm -hmm. humans so, so <laughs> if you didn't know <laughs> if you didn't know that this was human there's an example for you there, they're sitting there, skeletons. Mm -hmm. oh. And the ladder, yeah. look at the ladder that goes oh, that's up. The, which Jacob's ladder, DNA. The the staircase to heaven, right? Your spine, yeah. like this is the door connected to the spine to the staircase of heaven, mm -hmm. right? This is all like symbolic of a body, a human that is divine, divinely made and created with with the door with jacob's ladder which is the, the staircase feeling. to heaven yep 
you know, and the different yeah. tiers because the lighthouse yeah. has tiers. Yeah. So you can look at that as like, you know, your chakras. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> On the beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. The, the beach, the, the beach is representative of clay that hu that the, the human divine being is created from the clay of all that is like it. Once it manifests, it manifests from the matter, the yeah, dust, the matter, the which is the clay of the body, which is what everything is created out of. Yes. The, the matter. Yes. Yeah. The primordial matter. Mm -hmm. And underneath, obviously, they go inside. The Notice the psychologist goes in first, though. And here's this, like, black cavern, which looks very similar, like. Looks like the know, mouth of the Ouroboros. It does. It does. It looks like something else, too, like a like a canal of Have birth. A, like a. Too. Yeah. 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 Well, um, because it is. It's birthing yeah. something completely. It? It's like walking through a portal. Yeah. Doesn't this also remind you of um, aliens? Do you yeah, remember absolutely. Like going through the yeah, it reminds me of the oh, mouth oh, oh, oh. of a of a serpent. Uh, uh, yes, like there's the teeth. Mm -hmm. there's the teeth. Yeah, that looks like a mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well spotted. Look at this weird shit. This just comes, this is there. This is whatever. Mm -hmm. This is whatever impression is made. It's mm -hmm. like a constant movement of of something um, that could be potential, which is exactly mm -hmm. the the um, ability of what they're doing. Is I mean, they, if they present to you in white papers in the, uh, in, in, uh, the, the political arena, they send white papers out with ideas that they're going to basically do X, Y, and Z to you. Um, and they've already written down the law and it's just going to be a few days before the law is made real. And so yeah. they have to, and so this, that, that's like, it, it's not even happened yet, but they're making you think that it's going to happen. So, and, and all of this weird shit's happening in your head because you're like thinking, Oh my God, this is going to happen, but it's not happened yet. But your consent within just mm -hmm. that fear moment allows it to start taking place. Right. Right. Because nothing is fixed. So oh. this is like a an ether of creation, which can be anything. Yeah. So it, this goes into your subconscious, unconscious, your conscious. You know, it can yeah. be literally created into anything because there's nothing fixed. So, yeah. you know, what, what, what happens when she enters this vagina, okay, of birth? She there goes into this creation state. Yes. Now, interestingly enough, um, I know that Alistair Crowley wanted to uh, replicate a universe by doing all kinds of horrific stuff, which I won't be going into. But it did have um, a lot to do with the type of birthing that would take place in a particular order, um, and not in a normal way, but in from behind. Okay, no, you gotta you. Okay, be a little bit more specific. <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> Just <on>. try. <laughs> oh, okay, man. so he wanted he wanted to create a copy okay. of re a copy the of the homunculus. inversion. Huh? Yep. He wanted homunculus. to create a copy of a yes. copy universe from the copy yes. universe. From the um, but yet, but because it's inverted, he had to do it anally. Yeah. That yeah. Okay. Okay, let's not hope. Let's hope it doesn't get flagged. But but, but that but that's because it's going into the staircase the staircase yes. to heaven, and it's and it's inverting yes. it. Hundred percent. That's why it had to be that way. Yeah, exactly. That's it. This is what I'm yeah. seeing. Yeah. So exactly. Obviously, yeah. Okay, we kind of get the, like a whole guess now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, go back to that other one. Go back to the picture above. Okay. What, that. this one? Yeah? Yes. Right? I think that's the a black, loaded the picture. The black swan. This is the black swan that becomes, you know, she played the well, black swan. Well, you, you see, like, the canal. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see it. And and that's like she's literally being birthed right now. Yes. From behind. Like from she, behind. Yes. That is exactly what I was thinking. Yep. Because and mm-hmm. then, then this is related to Crowley's crap. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> okay, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's probably why toilet paper was such a big deal. Do you remember the big chaos with toilet yeah. paper well, in the world? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was in Costco at like the moment that happened, and yeah. everyone except for me and this one man, everybody was fighting over like toilet paper. It was like this mad, crazy mind control that switch that they just hit the button. Yeah. And and there's man and I were the only ones who just stood there watching everybody going like, what? The? But it was like they were taken over. I know. Like a, like a switch was flipped. Yeah. And they just were drones and, and all, it was the craziest thing. I know. We had the same weird thing that happened the funniest thing we actually had a feeling we had we wanted to go and do a shopping and then suddenly just this weird feeling happened around us mm-hmm. made us feel dizzy um and wow. these people were just like loading their trolleys with toilet paper it was insane it was crazy mm. very crazy anyway so there there's her homunculus mm-hmm Yeah. Uh which is her also poop, her poopy copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so that's it. She makes the agreement, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And then uh I've skipped all the parts where it, they have a tussle and the fight, but eventually mm-hmm. she does. Um there's a part that I need to need to explain here, which I need to put in, I suppose. Um is the way she tries to out with this thing is by um after they've had a big a serious fight um is she gave it a grenade and it it blew itself up so but it well, had made a copy of her this well thing. but but this is representative of the fact that they're doing the same thing by by oh. making copies of the original yes. exactly and they're making inverted copies of the original yeah in hopes to destroy and delete the originals and maintain the copied inverted version yeah the new mutated fallen angelic nephilim version yeah absolutely it's like a this is the the moment it happens There's the agreement within the basic level of the existence, uh, whether it was through fighting or agreement or whatever, but she in her in her thoughts had assumed that that is she had taken care of the problem. However, you don't know until you see in the last part and they leave it extremely ambiguous. You know, you so you never really know. I suppose they and so it starts to burn from that hole um, where it had hit. Um, mm. coincidentally, that map, that 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 marking on that side of the map, of, on the thing, that it's like a map. There's a big, I can see a map. That's a total map. Can you enlarge yeah, I that? I, I will. Let me see if I can. I'll find it for you and I'll enlarge okay. it. Uh, what, no. have you figured out what continent that is? Yes, it's actually, it's Russia. I've got the it's picture. Russia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll, oh, I'll... look at the tree of life beside it. By the way, yes, that's what I was going to say. That, the whole that beside, thing is... no, beside it. What this? On the right. Oh no, no, no! Go to the right. Go to the right. Go to the right. There. No, go to the right. I'm going to. Oh, that's the tree of life, and it's Next right to... beside ah, Jacob's okay. ladder. Okay. Literally. Yeah. Okay, so you're seeing that the origin. The template is the tree of life is not being burned. This is divine. What's being burned is the tower. The, yes, the, the tower, point of infection, of the point of infection in in us, if you will. Now, where Russia, where the map is um, 
That's well, that interesting. Is, it looks like Russia, and I need to find the picture quickly if you can give me a second. Um, uh, let me find it quickly. What I'll do is I'll actually send it to you. These are great pictures. Oh, thank you. You did a you did a great job. It took me a it took a while, um, but definitely it was um, very very much worth it. So uh, why Russia? Why the continent Russia? So this is interesting because I I'll send you the the thing. Uh, okay. Let me send it to you right now. Actually, okay. I'll send it to your phone. Yep. Uh, okay, have a look at that. I mean that this is like a fabulous picture because the point of infection you could look at came from the side of the rib that was creating something that was duplicated and counterfeited and it's right beside the divine template of the tree of life which is not infected because it can't be infected and that's why it, it's brilliant with like divine starlights in it it does make sense. I've sent you two pictures now. You'll oh, know. Oh yeah, look at that. So look at it. I don't want to put it on here. Mm -hmm. So, but I will put it on in on my website, and and you've got the pictures now. You see that picture? Yeah, just hang on. This is very interesting. I turned it upside um, down so that it fits. Because mm -hmm. that's weird. Unless I just uh, do you know what? Quickly slide it in. I don't know. It is this kind of a. I'm not sure if that's. I'm not sure. I mean, that can also look like North America. Uh yes, and also it could look like it could look like Pangea. Oh well, yes, it's got India and Africa in it as well. Mm hmm. Wow, that is very interesting. Oh. And the depiction, uh, like, you've got, like, kind of weird pictures beside it. They look like they're not pictures, but when you look at it, there's something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is very, very, very interesting. But this is what I I mean, they're, they're always putting in something, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah, of, yeah it's, of course. I mean, it's not. That's why I'm saying the series is about script keepers. They they are showing us by showing yes. us the script. Um, let's see if I can put this in here. Oh no, I can't. I'll have to put it on my website, folks. You can look at it yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. This is this. This could basically represent anything. If you had to literally zoom in, you'd see quite a lot of other things going on there. But that picture, the picture that I've sent to you now, now you see, oh, oh, I was brave enough and I did it. Okay, oh, here it yeah. is. That's that. That was uh -huh. just what I was thinking. But as I say, this is like a sort of an exploring thing. But look at North America um, above it. Just above it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, there. now look at that and look yeah, at this. Could be that as well. Yes. But don't you think that the an actual image itself with highlighting mm. that is yellow is yeah. weird? Very weird. Do That's saying I mean? like yeah. That is very revealing. And now That's what I'm saying. we we gotta like figure out what it's what it's saying. <laughs> Well, they're saying, <laughs> like, I mean, but obviously that means more than that. You just take mm -hmm. the information that we've just discussed about this thingy. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and also, in it, that looks and like, so what does that hole look like? Well, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like a birth canal. No, it looks like the or other thing. It looks thing. like a starfish. Huh? Looks it looks like the sphincter. Well, I I didn't want to say that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to use 
those words on this thing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't think they can. I don't think, think they can, can do anything. I don't no. See them. What no, I because we're do, we're we're doing this as an educational thing, and that's a part yeah. of the anatomy, so it, it's representative. Yeah, this that's is all. true. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> So wait a minute. Yeah. You know what I think is going on here? Mm. Okay, so I think this is like the switching of if you used to have a country called Mother Russia, it's now Father Russia, it'll become Father Russia. If it was Mother America or Father America, it'll become Mother America. Mm. I'm thinking it's switching um polarity. Uh a changing of the guard. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm thinking right. they're showing these things here. So at the same time, all the other continents that are around in the world or the re the plane is yeah. affected by the switching. Mm -hmm. Except if you are within your consciousness really strong. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to go through this without um, your slide through the mirrors. Let's hope you don't get chopped up mm -hmm. by the mirrors, but the <laughs> 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 is an evil anyway or is that yeah. represent is it can it also be representative of of like the initial infection and how yeah. it's taken over everything and yeah and are they now doing a reinfection to create yeah. a new version or is that what it's representing well in the end when she comes out from there she stands there between the two pillars Joachim and Boaz Mm -hmm. who are equal, masculine and feminine, they're equal, and she's in the middle as the star pillar uh, on the Masonic tracing board, and she's in the mm -hmm. shadow. So the star, which is the third eye, or the representation of the third eye, is now blackened out or in the shadow, while as the other polarities are now more prominent um, what? and equal, which is bizarre. And that but so that's far. also representative of, of the reality of as above so below the yes. two reflecting one another yeah. in a mere reality and that yeah. is usually what this duplication this is like a, a two reality interface as above so below yes and then yeah. and also, uh, you know also equaling male and female to one another which is that old right. chance right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah we're looking at the at all of that stuff i've given some ideas in the book something very interesting i know um i'm thinking about what you said just now while i'm reading here yeah, area x in the book doesn't create anything in the book it says area x does not create anything but assimilates and mutates mutates it can't create yeah. because it, it's a counterfeit mirror system it's a counterfeit um facsimile copying duplication it, it can only duplicate it can never it can never be original because it isn't original it is a creation yeah. of the copy so it can never create it can yeah. only imitate yes there's a lot of people like that in the world copy artists yes yes oh. mm -hmm. okay, lots. Like, uh, so. we know about that <laughs> we know we know lots <laughs> so Lycra as an ideology of subsets ideals for people to live within while simulacrum is the hyper reality of such events video game mm. uh, of copies within copies people copying people there we go copying media and media copying people etc and so in the book, I thought this was interesting. Um, it's related to an alchemical processes, which is initiation. The mm -hmm. if you if you look in the book, the, the as you go into the first page, it says mm -hmm. instead of writing chapter one, it says initiation. Announces mm -hmm. the introduction of area X and then next chapter. Integration, the journey oh, and yeah. integration with the environment to give up the self. And then mm -hmm. the third chapter, which is immolation or sacrifice of a mass, what's happening right now. And then dissolution, extinction of life or annihilation. What's happening now? Yeah. Or what's making us also, or what's, what's presented 
as it's as it's presenting itself to happen that way, which then obviously leads thought leads to physical to matter happening, as you say, as above, so below. Yes. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is this has been pretty. Uh, it's been a very exciting um, summary of the of the work of the book. Uh, a definite must see for people if they haven't seen it. Yes, now that you because know it, it is. Yeah. Because it is it, it, what it's telling you is the story of what's happening here and what's been happening here ever since, you know, people mm -hmm. have been trapped in the counterfeit version, in the yes. inverted version. And this is its story. This is, you know, revealing about the psyche that has been imprinted mm -hmm. in consciousness here. Yes. And that the consciousness that is developing is a mutating fungus mimicking type of consciousness which is just another way of saying that the simulation or the not the sorry not simulation the re, uh, uh, system overlay is what i'm calling it um is organically focused on you it is individual well, every person because it it wants to take what is divine and original yeah. and invert okay. it and yeah. and basically parasite it so that it is interfaced now as a new hybrid inverted creation. So it's always it's always trying to take from the original, from the divine template. So mm -hmm. the tree of life in this movie, which is all sparkly and beautiful, mm -hmm. is the tree of life that cannot be corrupted because you are of divine origin. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, what's what has to be burned is your is the false overlays that are basically blinding everyone to their original template and in and making them have a relationship with the interface of that inversion here, that parasite inversion. Yeah. That's what's being burned. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's all about taking from original. And that's why this reality has to collect algorithms from the original primes because it doesn't have creation. It can't create. It can oh. only copy and mimic. So yeah. it must take and collect from what is original and then keep duplicating. Mm. Absolutely. Anything that you feel, I actually think that we've 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 summarized it pretty well. There's a lot of stuff in here, but we have a limited time. Mm -hmm. um, I think we uh, what we could take is there anything that you feel that we could take with us um, from your experience? Yeah, that you are divine, original, prime creation, and you know you are literally the origin of what is truly uninverted and divine so you have to remember who you are and you have to bring that here to be the glitch in the matrix and to bring this yeah, down absolutely and to disempower the structure here and the parasite and the demiurge and to disempower the takeover of the psyche and the way that you interface so you are the divine you mm -hmm. are the original prime absolutely you know I and agree. and you're in an inversion you don't have to be of it you yeah. can you can start really dismantling this breaking through these dimensional veils that are hiding the nature of reality and your abilities i agree with that thank you Thank you very much for joining me, analyzing this movie. That was fun. I did, I enjoyed it. That uh, was I hope great. Do it again. Yeah. It was, yeah, very, very telling. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely watch the movie if you haven't, you guys. Yeah. Let's hope we can do this again next time. <laughs> yes, yeah, we'll one. pick it. We'll pick the next one. This has yeah. been fabulous. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.